All right, Tony Rice's guitar break on Big Spike hairdo. Big Spike hamster. Big Spike hammer. Tony Rice's guitar break on Big Spike hammer from the Bluegrass Album Band Volume 3. Now this is a solo that I've been looking forward to getting to for um, quite some time. This is probably one of my favorite breaks that he's recorded on any project. Yes, I know that he's done some really cool stuff, that there are some really amazing recordings out there of some different stuff like that too. I really love this particular solo because it's very concise, it's very melodic, and it's very just like neat in how it's put together. He does utilize some chromatic notes. He does utilize some of those familiar Tony Rice isms that we've talked about before, but it's done in such a way that's just, like I said, it's very neat and it's very clean. So um, let's play it at 100% and get right to it. Alright, so there's a lot going on there, so we're going to slow it down to about 70% and then we'll break it down even further. So here it is at 70%, Big Spike Hammer. So before we dive in and really pick this thing apart, it's important to note that they are capoed on the 4th fret, but playing out of the G position, so they are in the key of B. The half B, or half note, is uh, right around 126, so the micro beats around 252, something to think about as you set your metronome when you're practicing this as well. Um, Alright, so let's dive in, let's take it uh, phrase by phrase. Um, I'm just going to play the first phrase um, going from G to that E minor that happens there. So let's unpack that phrase. It's not going to come as any surprise to you that he starts on the and of one on an upstroke on the D string. He does that, like, I, I feel like every single song we've talked about so far has, has kind of been that way. Um, he always starts on that and of one on the D string as an upstroke, okay? And then he takes it into kind of an altered, we're used to that pentatonic pattern going from G to D the gold rush lick or whatever um, he takes that gold rush lick and he adds a couple of chromatic notes so so he starts on an upstroke and of one D so B C natural C sharp D lays over to the high G and then that's that Tony Riceism that just keeps popping up Size, very easy to throw in all sorts of different solos. Okay. Um, now I'm going to let you know that this is not the first time I've tried to tackle this particular solo. I first tried to transcribe this. I was very new to transcribing um, solos. Uh, my ear training wasn't quite that developed. My sense of rhythm wasn't that well developed. About seven or eight years ago is when I first tried to tackle this. And I had a heck of a time just getting the rhythm right in that first opening phrase, especially with that and of one D note. One thing that helps, and I tend to do it still too, just because it feels really good, is I kind of do like a half G lick right beforehand to kind of set up that first phrase. And what I mean by that is I'll do this at that opening phrase. So instead of going, instead I'll go. So I add that pull off E down to D, G, and then I'm up for that, for that D. Um, it's, it's an option if you're having a hard time feeling that rhythm you can add those extra notes in kind of helps it feel a little bit more complete there so you're not starting um, in the dark there so but I digress all right so we've tackled that first opening note all the way to that Tony Riceism right there okay leading down to that E minor you have a series of pull-offs that happen kind of around the second fret Okay, so we go from E down to D, 
So then B. Okay, so I'll do it really slow. Um, let's start from the very beginning. absolutely love this solo too because he goes all the way down to that open E or really that capo E. You don't hear that enough I feel like in, in bluegrass guitar. Everyone usually focuses on like that upper register um, but just changing it up and going down to that lower octave it just adds such a different flavor to the whole solo. So it's a really cool lick. He holds on to that open open E note for three whole beats before going to um, C, which again is kind of a novelty there because you know we're usually in eighth note mode going really fast, but to hold on to that for three whole beats um, kind of breaks up that um, monotony. So first phrase again. Okay, now we're ready to set up for that C shape. Let's break that down. So you're starting on your open A string. Okay, there's nothing really too crazy going on in there. There are a couple of chromatic notes, and in that he goes from that D sharp to that E. And then after that C, you, uh, he lands on that B flat, and, I'm sorry, B flat, and slides it down. So that pattern of going from C, B, of B flat to A, so we've seen that in other solos too. You can add that uh, hammer on right there. We're back into that E minor shape, okay? And don't worry, like I said, I'll put the uh, uh, transcription notes in the description of this video. You can see exactly what those notes are too. Cool. I don't think you'll have any problems with it. Okay, this next lick is another one that's really, really tough to feel if uh, maybe some of the, the rhythmic stuff is maybe new to you, okay? And it's just kind of this like little filler section of eighth notes that leads you to the start of the new phrase or, or kind of we hit the halfway point in the break, we're leading to the next one. The, the second half mirrors the first uh, quite a bit, but there's some slight variations. So let's take a look at this transitional lick. Not much to it, but it feels really weird. The important thing to remember is it happens right on the downbeat of beat four of that measure. Okay, again, this is one that's really hard to feel um, at first, but it does get easier over time. Okay, so we've just done the... So I'm gonna go pull off, then G, D, and then I'm gonna add another up note, up beat on uh, G right back to kind of that opening lick. Okay, so with that, uh, let's start at the C lick. Now, we're gonna change it. Uh, okay, he breaks up the monotony. Like I said, I, that's what I love about it. It's so melodically concise, and he does some very simple variations to give it a little extra flavor, and that's what makes the solo really cool. So really the only difference, okay, so we're going to start it out the same. Now I'm going to slide that A to B, catch that high D, then slide it back. And then I've got a couple of um, kind of pentatonic pattern notes. Centered around that D, that E, and that G. Okay, now we're right back at another Tony Rice ism, right? That E flat down to D pull off to catch that C. We've seen that before too. He loves to kind of frame that four chord that way. And you can just kind of do that all day too. So he does it a couple times. Uh, let's take a look at how it looks here. So it's gonna go one. And then he's going to lead it chromatically up to that E natural. Okay, so just some slight variations there. Okay, and again he's going to hold on to that E 
for a while. Okay? All right, so second half, we'll start at the top of the second half with that transition leg. to that E for two beats and then he's gonna change that transition like just a little bit these notes honestly if you slow it really down you hear a lot of ghost notes that are kind of difficult to hear so this next lick I might not have a hundred percent accurately and this is just kind of what I was able to approximate based on what I could hear on the recording when it was slowed way down okay okay it's 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 a pretty easy pattern there are a couple of hammer-ons there's a couple pull-offs right to that D banjo leg that you know you hear all the time in like Foggy Mountain Breakdown or whatever and then here come the blues licks so right there at the end starting on the D chord I've got open D high D high D and then uh, from a G down to an F natural and then I'm borrowing my first finger. Okay, so check out those uh, transcription notes. Um, we're gonna play it at 100% one more time. Hopefully that breakdown was kind of helpful. Like I said, I think it's a very accessible break. Again, it's very melodic and it's very easy to, to just kind of like wrap your head around the phrasing. There are some tricky rhythmic spots. So I encourage you to, you know, set your metronome, practice it slow. You can use some of those extra filler lick kind of ideas too. Um, so let's play it at 100% one more time. Ah! 